Hello again, lovelies. In any of my stories that I am telling and told, I refer to people as ugly based on their ways and their character they display towards me or what I see they display towards others, what I see, what I witness. Not know what, what no one tell me. I don't be on that, tell me, tell me, ma. I don't be on that. Okay? I don't be into that. <laughs> okay? Some people, they so nice looking physically. But their ways are the most horrible ways you want to know. And that's an ugly person. That's a nasty ways person. Okay? Some people, they ugly, ugly, ugly. And they have ugly ways. You should at least had some. You should at least, because you're physically ugly, you should have had nice ways to carry it off. They call it to balance it out. <laughs> okay? It's too much ugly. It's just too much ugly. You ugly and you have ugly ways? It's just too much ugly. And you wonder why people don't want to stay around you? You don't see your ugly ways, eh? And some people, they just as a follower in life. They follow everything they see other people do. They have no mind of their own. They remind me that commercial would say, don't be a mindless dummy. A mindless dummy. They don't realize they like that. They don't realize they like that. Just follow what everybody do. Everything I do, the monkey won't do. And their ways, they depict the ways of others. Okay? A person like me, I didn't just start being a leader. For I was a naturally born leader. Hence, leader in brownies. I was a leader in girls' guides. I was a secretary in Red Cross. I was in the Park Finders. I was in Seventh Day Adventist Church Choir, Grandstown. I was in Faith Temple Choir. I used to lead AFI lead when I was in 10th grade. I used to teach the 12th grade when they have the teachers meeting. They used to appoint me a 10th grader to teach the 12th graders. Hello, somebody. Yes. I was a leader in everything I touched. Okay? I was a Miss Grandstown three different times. Okay? Hence, I used to do community service all through Grandstown and be in town every day as a young person. Hello, somebody. You name it, I did it. They were all positive things. And I get to know all the heroes. That we sing praises of today. And I never knew that I was walking in history. And so that's why in a lot of my speech, you hear me give credence to Sir Linden. I used to see him every day. I never knew by seeing him and being in his presence, I was actually learning. And you grow big. And you realize how much you learn. Hello, somebody. That's why they say you guys sit at the feet of the elders. Ain't nothing new under the sun. They just come in a different shape, form, or size, or a different, you know, they just pretty it up somehow. But ain't nothing new under the sun. <laughs> Get it right. And so, when I refer to people, but they're ugly ways because they have ugly, nasty ways. And people are sick and tired of, especially in the workplace, coming across people with their ugly, nasty ways. And come see them. They got a face only your mama can love. Y'all ever, <laughs> ever hear that statement? <laughs> they got a face only your mama can love. <laughs> When I was young and little, I had like, they call, they used to call me graveyard dirt. I had that like dark, pretty brown, brownish, brownish skin. 
but I had golden hair. And they used to love dress me up in white when I go into church. And then they like to take picture with me standing in the sun. It looked like my hair is on fire. Almost looked like the color of the sun sometime. And they used to tease me, redhead, gingerbread, you teach your mom potato bread. The, the little children, redhead, gingerbread, you teach your mom potato bread. That's what they used to teach me in Sales Primary School. I used to fight all the time. I have no shame in my game. And listen here, my father, I guess he wanted a little boy so bad, he trained me. I was like a little tomboy. <laughs> Anybody who teased me used to get it. <laughs> that was in primary school, sales primary school, okay? So, me and all that people are friends, right? And we have beautiful relationship. I still have beautiful relationship, but they found me. Can they find me? Remember me? That's the little red head one. Everybody remember me. They shocked to see my hair black. Now I dye my hair myself so much time till it, 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 it stay black. <laughs> I couldn't stand the red hair because I was tired of people teasing me. That's the only time I used to get teased in school, but they used to rule the day. And that was a primary school. So when people see me, I get natural black hair now because I keep dyeing my hair every time. Every time I dye my hair. When my daughter born, she had never had black hair. She had dark brown hair with golden streaks all through and through her hair. Like you, like how people have gray strands through and through their hair. My daughter had golden streaks through and through her hair. Natural golden streaks. People used to be in awe of her because she had the pretty brown eyes and the golden streaks all through her hair too. Beautiful baby. Not because it was mine. But I'm a nice looking woman, so what else? What you expect? Hey! But back to the subject. Y'all need to stop your nasty ways. People tired of that. 2023. Too much people dying. You see how thick the newspapers be every Thursday? Some they have to put before Thursday. Some they got put in the regular part of the paper. is too big. That's how many people dying. Do you all realize we have no place to bury no dead no more? They now need to consider maybe going to what? Andres was the closest island. That's what they do in New York. People used to wonder where the people um, dead in New York. A lot of times they have a whole, they have a whole island where they bury the unknowns, they call it. From New York, like the street people, homeless people and stuff, they bury them there. And then they have a part of that same island where they bury people who are known. Like people who can't afford the fancier maybe places, one or two places. But people always wonder where they bury their dead. Charlie have a whole island to bury their dead. We need to now maybe look into considering that. But like I say, you know, I talk long. So back to the subject. That's why I can tell my story. Back to the subject. Y'all with your nasty ways, people tired of it. You're then ugly. And no one, when you're ugly, you got to be quiet sometime. Just no one, people don't like all that ugliness. It's, it's just too much. Like Medea say, you, you put it on too much, you got to do it slow. You got to do it slow. It's just too much one time. <laughs> Tyler Perry say, it's just too much one time. You got to do it slow. Because when you put that all that ugly one time, it can cause people to get heart attacks. You know what I'm People die my heart attack. That's our number one killer. And then you got ways to match the looks. That's just too much ugly. And if Tyler Perry say you got to do it slow. And that's just for the physical ugly. And then you got a nasty ways to top off that physical ugly. Making you triple ugly. Not even double. Triple ugly. Okay. That's just too much ugly. And if you got to do it slow for the physical parents. You got to do it triple slow. You got to go... Ooh. Yeah, you got to do it slow-mo, slow motion this time. Slow. Because it's too much ugly to take one time. You can cause people to get heart attack, man. <laughs> Stop it. You know you're beautiful, and then you're nasty with it. Stop it. <laughs> you're going to cause people to get heart attack. It's too much ugly. Yes, it's too much ugly. Hey, hey, stop it. 
find yourself and try to practice. You can change yourself. You can practice to be more pleasant with others. You can practice on what to say to others. You can practice how you say to others because a message delivered, how you say it will make a difference as well. You see what I'm saying? How you say it can make a difference as well. People tired of that ugly. A lot of people hurting mine. If all this going on in Nassau can't tell you a lot of people going through troubles and hurting, I don't know what else can show you. You need to take the cataract off your eyes so you can see. You need to take the cataracts off your eyes so you can see. And try to come to people a little more pleasant. What happened? Your mother didn't love you enough? Because material things don't mean you, you, you're getting love. Because some parents give, they turn and everything, and they are not physically present. And so the children still feel and love. What happened? You didn't, you get all the material things because you would think you're so up there. Um, you had all the material things and you still ain't had enough love. Will Jesus love you? So stop it. Stop it in 20, the remainder of 23, 2023 and beyond. Stop the nasty ways. Learn to be a more pleasant. Learn a different way of approaching others in a more pleasant way. Not because of what position you have. You need to come off that high horse because guess what? Everybody who did, I never see that guy in a position either behind them. The minute you're sick, they don't have someone doing your work. The minute you're absent one day, somebody got to sit in. Hello. Or do what you're supposed to. So if that ain't telling you, you mean you, don't, you ain't that smart to pick up? These people who got degree and the this and the that, y'all ain't that smart to pick up? What that mean? That mean all that you running behind don't mean nothing at the end of the day. It means nada. It means nothing at the end of the day. So change your nasty, ugly ways. Because some people, they ugly as sin. You call that physically ugly. Only a mama can love their face. But they the most beautifulest person to be around because they have such beautiful ways. And when you find some persons like that, their physical appearance look beautiful to you. You can't even see they're ugly. You can't even see they're ugly. I'm telling you, I've experienced it over and over and over. Because someone, someone did ask me uh, um, years ago, years ago, when I was a, a little younger, somebody did ask me, say, why are you always hanging around all these ugly girls? And you so pretty. You're the prettiest one. I don't hang around them because I won't feel like a head or whatever. They're beautiful ways. They're beautiful ways. I'm not a, attracted to people because of their physical appearance. I'm attracted to people because of their ways. Of their ways. And I can see through, just through the nasty, wannabe, conniving. I like them people got scales on my eyes. I uh, have discernment of spirit. I can see straight to you even before I meet you sometime and before you come to me. I can tell you that because I call somebody, leave a workplace in tears when I tell them what God tell them. And they were shocked. They leave trembling because... And they come back three days later and tell every staff member what I told them was true. They was trying to be so nasty to somebody and I told them not to do it. Not in my presence. And I told them, like I just started speaking. I don't know where all this information came from. I never knew the person before I met the person. And this person leave trembling at night in tears. And I couldn't even stop what I was doing. And three days later, the person came to me. And said they had to rededicate their life to God because everything I said to them is true. And that they did make a promise to God because they were homeless. That if God would give them a house, that they will never forget to serve God. And they will always extend their hand to help people in need. And they haven't lived up to that instead. With that night when they was being nasty to the person and I speak out to them and I start with all these things. But I didn't know where it came from. It made them see that God was using me to speak to them. And they went back to the pastor who had helped them to rededicate their life back to what they had promised God that they will do. This is a serious scenario because I tell you about this now and it's giving me goosebumps. And they went back to college to be a counselor. And they're doing better now. They don't speak to people that way no more. And I think 
they understand the true message that I had to deliver. I was used as a vessel that night. The person who they was talking to was a Junsa person who came into the shop. I was working at Domino's and it was late night and the person was hungry. We sometimes once or twice have leftover pizza that people order and don't get. You can not have that the next day to serve to nobody. So sometime you can sell it to whoever want buy for a cheaper rate. And I personally asked if I could have had it to give to this person after they were so insulting to the person because the person was hungry. And I make sure I let them know we don't do it all the time because that is not the company policy because you don't want nobody to be coming there to get freeness when it's not so, okay? And so I, they understood, but they appreciate it. And do you know that same Junsa person now was on drugs so bad? That was what? A couple, 20 some years ago, I think. You know, they are now married. They ch sometimes kindness can change people. They are married, have a family, and they are working, and they haven't forgot that moment. I forgot them, but they never forgot me. Because they, one time I was somewhere and they said, you remember the gentleman, I was so hard on drugs that I came, and you had to fix the lady. And I say, Jesus, that was you. It is amazing how even drugs has changed your features. So you got to be careful with your nasty ways, how y'all treat others. You do things sometimes a little better. And stop showing out. Because you have, you think, because I have this and I have that. You ain't carrying nothing behind you. Dust dress up. And thus you shall return over and out. <laughs>